Welcome back to the Gardening with You and Holly Radio Show. Time for your garden questions, our garden answers. Thank you for allowing us to be part of your day. If you've got a question, you can certainly fire that on over here to gardentalkradio at gmail.com. That's gardentalkradio at gmail.com. Or if you'd like to jam your fingers in the phone, you can send us a uh, voice or you can give us a call toll free 1-800-927-SHOW. That's toll free coast to coast at 1-800-927-7469. Had a number of questions. Let's see what we can get through, Holly. Um, I am growing containers for the first time. Um, do I need to use a saucer underneath? So I think this is more or less personal preference, especially if you are growing on a patio or deck where you probably don't want it to be stained. It or does, or if you're on a balcony yeah, and it trickles balcony. down underneath the people below you and then you've got angry neighbors. Also, so his concern was is that it would be flush with the, I think it was his deck, I forget. Okay. Um, and then it wouldn't allow for drainage, but most containers you grow in are not flat on the bottom. They're beveled. In some instances, yeah. unless it's like a, a plastic pot that you're reusing. Right. Yeah. So as long as I assured him, as long as there was drainage, it was fine. Um, it's up to him, whatever. But I think that sometimes people just like the aesthetic of it too. Well, if it you, let's, let's say you're using a root maker grow bag and you put it on a saucer, you water it and the excess water will collect in that saucer and excess will overflow but then the capillary action will kick in at some point before it evaporates and it will wick it back into the container or the grow bag so you can reuse some of that water that you're not having to water i mean it's not a you know, long term but it's a little extra water that will retract back up into that soil so i think again it's personal preference. some people will take a plastic kid sled and put plants in that i mean they're like all different colors and kind of create like a little basin where there is maybe an inch of water in the bottom of that that will wick back up over the course of a couple of days so they don't have to water as frequently. That's smart, too. Uh, you don't have to use a plastic sled, but you can certainly use uh, several different um, different things there. All right. Um, let's see. Next question here. I have tomatoes with the lower stems that I, be- I have found out are air roots. What can I do, if anything, about them? It's not bad. A lot of times, especially if we have high humidity, the tomatoes are naturally going to do that. A lot of moisture. A lot of moisture Whether you, And you can be splashing water up on the stem. That's too. Yeah. Um, tomatoes just have this, because of the type of plant that they are, every, basically, when you see those hairs on the tomato plants, that's an opportunity for root. If, you know, you're splashing water on the plants, high humidity, a lot of moisture in the air, they are going to possibly sh- sh- form roots like that. There's not really anything you can do. It's not harmful Just to plant. Yeah. yeah. It's, there's nothing most of the time that you're doing, and there's nothing really that you can do in order to prevent this. It's a natural occurring thing, so it's, it's no foul of uh, one way or another. My ground garden has had t- so much rain in the last two weeks. Uh, there's no ponding. Uh, the raw water has drained through the soil. My fear is the plants have suffered. Is there anything I can do to help my plants out? Well, it's good that there's no pooling or puddling. That, yeah. That's good. There's good drainage. That would be, yeah, that means you have good drainage. Um, if there's no pooling or puddling, I wouldn't worry about it. You could mulch. You, mulching will help as it will hold or retain some of that moisture to prevent it from pull, uh, going into the soil. Now, we're going to focus on ground garden here because containers and raised beds, totally different animal when there's too much water and it's leaching out the nutrients. Ground garden, you're going to see the effects, if there is negative effects on your plants, about 7 to 14 days. Uh, if it's going to start to turn yellowing, if there is too much water, or if there's puddling or p- p- ponding, it's going to prevent the oxygen in the soil from getting to the plant, and it will basically suffocate the plant. You're going to get a yellow plant. In this application, there is not any puddling or ponding, so it appears that it will not uh long-term harm the plant uh again yellowing it would be the uh, lack of nitrogen and or lack of oxygen to the plant because the roots are submerged and cannot breathe so there's not much you can do 7 14 days they'll come out of it um there are ways people will put like you know tarps or stuff over top of to shed the water off I don't think there's a lot. To, there's a lot. To, I mean, there's some people that's gotten four or five inches of rain in three days. Right. This is just part of. Uh, people will often. This is this is one of these things where, uh, straw bell gardening 
is a way to go about doing it because the bale never gets submerged. It only absorbs the moisture it needs and it repels the rest. So you would always be above ground and no matter how much rain you got, unless you were getting feet and feet of rain, your straw bale is always going to be adequately moisturized and the plants are always going to have the sufficient amount of nutrients because the bale is breaking down the, uh, in, in the conditioning process, it created the, the hummus, humus. humus that it needed in order to su- uh, supply the plant with the nutrients. Right. So, yeah, as, you know, Joy mentioned the straw bale, I think the mulch, um, straw. Proper drainage. Yeah, Make proper sure drainage. that if you are in the position where you have pooling and ponding, that you figure out how to create ditches and or waterways in your garden to shed that water away, no matter how much water you get. If that is not an issue, uh, not a, a, an opportunity there, build the garden up. Add, bring material up so you are higher than ground grade so the water will always shed away from the garden. It will absorb, yes, but amounts of water like some people are getting, it will run away almost like your garden's on a... With that being said, we are out of time and it's time for what we learned today. Do you know what you learned today? (laughs) I learned that potato beetles, we don't have this issue, but if you disturb the soil early in the spring... It seems like this helps with a lot of things, not just the tomato beetle, potato beetles, but the tomato hornworm as well. No, the squash vine. Squash vine. Um, but that's a whole other topic. But I think just knowing that if you kind of disturb the soil a little bit in the beginning of the year could could be helpful. I learned that uh, what carnivorous plants were. I did not aware of that. Holly informed me of that. I, fi- I figured it was the plants that ate things, but you know, you, sometimes you got to be referred. And I want one. You want one, yeah. Yes. And I'll have to help get your finger out of it when you put your... <laughs> oh, what happens if I... Oh, it bites you. That's uh, No, also that, that, you know, Brian moved in... For, lived, our guest, uh, from all of these big cities and then wound up in Nowheresville in Tennessee in the middle of nowhere country and had to basically relearn how to live in a way that he never imagined he would need to because of the silence and the how, nature. Yeah. Going from what they call the concrete you know, city or concrete jungle to the actual nature of nature. I think that's amazing. What we learned today is brought to you by Honey Bee Healthy. Whether you're a gardener, a bee hobbyist, or a professional beekeeper, Honey Bee Healthy Inc. has the products to help you maintain a healthy hive and thriving garden. For more information on how to use Honey Bee Healthy in your garden, visit honeybeehealthy.com. 